Welcome to worship. Today we, we gather together and we hear an ancient word from a prophet that we might be so used to hearing that our ears will be kind of not quite tuned to what it could tell us in a fresh way. It is my hope today that you tune your ears, not just to this prophetic word, but to divine life all around you in song and in prayer and in this gathering of worship. So pay attention, the Spirit is speaking. Let us worship. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me.
I've saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. We've heard this verse before. At least I've heard it many times before. It's a verse that we tend to go to often together. It's, it's, it's that Micah 6, 8 that you just heard. And it, it speaks to us in such ways. But sometimes something happens when we hear a verse often. Um, and it kind of takes a life of its own. Um, something happens in which it becomes maybe uh, kind of too every day, right? We're so used to hearing it. And then with a verse like Micah 6, 8, we also have the issue of the bumper sticker situation, right? So we see it in t-shirts, we see it in bumper stickers, we see it in art prints. And so then, then it has its own life, kind of its own way of, of being in the world. And then I think it can easily lose its meaning or its meanings. Uh, we, we now see it merely as as that bumper sticker or as that, or as that kind of verse we utilize to, to push back against certain things in the life of the church or in the world. But how are we to then get away from that way of being? Uh, now, we're talking about Micah 6, 8 today, but we could be talking about a plethora of other biblical texts that have that same effect for us. So let's, let's, let's put that aside for a moment. Let's Let's take all of that history with this text and let's, let's maybe put it aside, acknowledge it, that we have it. Let's put it aside for a moment and let's, let's explore together how he might speak to us in a different way in this moment. So, the people are struggling. Many of them are experiencing exile. And they are trying to figure out who are we to be in light of our current circumstance and situation. And when that happens, when we're going through a difficult situation, it is common for us to begin to ask questions about who are we? Who is this God that we proclaim? How are we to respond to this God that we're proclaiming? And so the community is asking those questions together and asking a more difficult question. So what does God want from us? What is this force in the universe that, it's, that we proclaim? What, what is that force asking of us what are we to do to get this divine life's attention? And so the prophet, the, the truth teller, the, the speaker in the community says, you know, this, this eternal life has told us what this one wants for us. And yes, you've been doing all these other things. You've been doing all this religious ritual and this way of being together. Again, nothing wrong with that way of being in the world. That certainly is part of what it means to, to be a participant in this divine life, this ritual, this community, this way of being. In their case, this sacrifice. But that's not enough. That's not the only thing. In fact, that thing, that religious ritual, that being together in community, this, this practicing of religion, of religion means that which binds, should then inspire us, strengthen us, call us into being a different way in the world. And that being, according to this ancient prophet, to these ancient people, is threefold. And it begins, this prophet says, 
with doing justice. Doing, that's an active movement. And justice is doing that which is right in the world, that which is whole in the world, that which is good, not just for us, but for others in the world. It's about balancing the scales. So, so this ancient prophet says, in light of this circumstance, in light of the situation, in light of who you claim to be, a beloved community called for God's purposes, then do justice. Do what is right in the world. Look around and pay attention to your neighbor and do that which is best for their healing, wholeness, and new life, for their flourishing. So for us today, we might look around and say, hey, you've been in worship. You've gathered together as a community. You, 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 you go and, and you do this religious observance. All that is good and we should do those things. But now, in light of that reality, then do justice. Care for neighbor in a particular way. Come alongside in kinship and, and speak on behalf of those that have little voice. Uh, make sure that you do a check-in in your own power and make sure that you use any power that you have in order to serve the good of neighbor, not just of yourself. Do justice. The second stop that the prophet makes is to love mercy or kindness, depending on the translation that you have. So you do justice, then love kindness or mercy. Be um, enthralled, captivated by mercy, kindness in the world. Loving kindness might be another good way to put this. Instead of being, being taken by other forces like power and control and selfishness and pride, no, 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 let love give your life to mercy and kindness in the world. So, so you can just imagine in that moment the way you, you look at the world is different in light of this reality. You no longer see enemy. You no longer try to protect yourself. You, you give the other the benefit of the doubt. You, you give the other an opportunity to, to be human in the world. You, you, you approach the world with positivity and joy instead of with suspicion, always looking for who might have it against you. That's a, that's a whole different approach to life, isn't it? And I think it's an approach to life that might be quite enlightening in these days. What does it mean then for us to, to love kindness today in this very moment, to be captivated by? That also means that we, we try to fill our lives with, with things that help us love kindness in the world. Being careful with bitterness and anger as it creeps in or jealousy and despair. We're going to have those feelings for sure, but then we're going to utilize those efforts that we have put around us to to, to lean towards kindness and mercy in all our encounters together. And then the, the, the third one is to walk humbly. Walking humbly. That's a posture, isn't it? I, I can see it. It has physicality in it. There's something about walking humbly. Not walking with our heads up as if we think we have it all together, not, not, not walking as if we, we are the center of the universe or as if we're, there's no one around us or nothing around us. No, no. Walking humbly for me means that we pay attention with each step that we take in every circumstance and in every place. We, we pay attention to the divine life that is in the other and in the world. And walking humbly means that we, we're purposeful. We're making a decision to to not think so highly of ourselves, but we recognizing our own frailties, the ways in which we too fail to live up to the ways of God in the world, the ways in which we too have received forgiveness and reconciliation, the way we too often do not model the way of love in the world. And all of a sudden now we we are a different people. So now what? We, 
we can practice. There's nothing wrong with practicing our religiosity, right? There's nothing wrong with you know, practicing those rituals and rhythms that bind us together with one another. Worship and, and giving to those in need and, and being in community together, that, that's awesome. But then, I mean, that then inspire us, in, in, inspire us then to, to live the way of God in the world, right? To, to be, to shine a light, right? To, to be the presence of divine life everywhere we go. So we do justice, practice it in the day-to-day -day life, in the nitty-gritty of life, uh, living into God's balancing of the world. And, and we, we love mercy, kindness in the world, right? We, we attune our hearts and we approach the other with, with that lens that actually changes everything. And, and then we walk. We posture ourselves into the world in a way that, that is filled with humility, lightly, knowing that we human like that other human and that God uses us, divine life uses us in spite of our humanity because of it and gives us new life over and over again. Grace abounds, in other words. So people of God, go be about this this week. You, God's people, you bound together, you being the presence of divine life everywhere you go. Thanks be to God. Amen. shine is so inspirational and I hope this worship has lifted up your spirits so now you're ready to go forth and do exactly what Micah told us that God desires to do justice 
to love kindness and to walk humbly with God. Go in peace.